Hey everyone, I'm going to be talking to you guys about blood magic, what it is, why people have done it, and just some little do's and don'ts. Uh, just a little intro about blood magic, so if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, like, subscribe, or engagement, and we'll move on to this. So, blood magic has been around for an incredibly long period of time, and we see blood magic expand in many different um, kind of avenues and directions that you can go with it, some of which I definitely do not recommend, and then others are a little bit of an okay. But before saying this, I also want you to know that this is not a beginner-friendly technique. Not only can this be dangerous, because if you are not completely sterile doing this process, it can be, you know, putting yourself at risk for things like infections and just whatever else, please be sterile when you're doing this, but it's also something where you really need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it because this is an incredibly binding um, technique to do. Now, we'll start kind of based off of that. So we have seen blood magic go in kind of two directions. I have seen people give it to offerings to deities and I have seen people use it in their magic, just working with spells. Now, I had mentioned if you watched my demonology video that I do not recommend anybody give their blood or any bodily fluid to a deity. Even though this has been a thing, it has been shunned by a lot of people because when you're doing this, sometimes, more often than not, uh, the deity may take offense to you giving that, but it's also an incredibly binding thing because I don't think a lot of people make the connection between, you know, my personal blood and then that being my DNA. So when you are, um, and let's say your deity uh, are, accepts something like that, just understand that you are signing off your DNA, but that also includes your past bloodline and your future bloodline. So, you know, it is incredibly binding and it's not really something that can be undone. And if somebody is able to undo blood magic, they are an incredibly, incredibly um, experienced and gifted um, practitioner, but I'm going to say 99% of people do not know how to kind of undo something involving that kind of thing. It's incredibly binding, like I had said, and I don't think people think about the full complexity of what they're doing before they're doing it. So this is why I mentioned that do not give your blood to a deity. And that has been shunned <laughs> from many people, from priests, priestesses, to just, you know, general everyday witches. Now, how we can use blood magic that is actually, you know, not as bad, it's just, or not as bad, I shouldn't say that because that sounds super negative, but in a way that is a little bit less um, invasive, I guess, is we can use blood magic to add potency, speed, and longevity to our spells. Now, like I'm, I'm going to keep prefacing this, that you don't need to use your blood to add speed, potency, and longevity to spells. And I will add alternatives uh, closer to the end so that in case you're a little bit like not ready to do it, but you still want those effects. Or if you want, you know, uh, you know, you just want recommendations because even if you're more uh, like skilled or you want to do it, but you're a little bit too scared to prick your finger or you just don't want to accidentally give yourself an infection because of sterilization and stuff, that's great. I will recommend things towards the end. But yeah, so like I had said, we use blood to add potency, speed, and longevity to our spells. And why we do this is because, like I had said, your DNA is the most personal thing that you can get. It's included all of your genetics and your past and your future bloodline. So that's literally the most personal thing that you can get. It is 100% your energy, nothing else. And that is why people have added it to their spells. And how you can do this is you don't need a lot. And also, please do not use another person's blood because, again, infection and consent. But also, please do not kill anything. Do not use blood from an animal. Do not use, do not kill anything. I'm also going to say that because that will backfire and... Um, 
just just don't do it and if you're killing something for magic you're not doing I don't think you're doing what you think you're doing and please don't do that stop <laughs> so um basically you can take your menstrual blood or prick your finger and you can add this um like on a q-tip and what you can do is when spells involving liquid you just stir the q-tip with a little bit of blood you just need like a little drop you don't need a lot I know some people like to get a little like slap happy with these things and be like, oh, I'm going to add a lot. And it's not even just with blood. It's also with things like certain flowers. You feel like you need more to add more potency. You don't. You just need a tiny little bit because remember, this is blood. This is the most like pure 100% thing. <laughs> so um, just a tiny little bit on a Q-tip. You can stir it in with those liquids. You can also put it at the tip of a candle, just kind of rub the Q-tip on there, but you can also use it on a piece of paper. Or So if you're writing something um, on the paper to use in your spells, whether you're putting it in a jar, in a lemon, whatever, um, if you take a little bit of the blood and just kind of um, on the Q-tip and just like rub it on the paper a little bit, or even if you wanted to do like a little sigil that you make and write the sigil with the Q-tip in blood, that would be uh, how you do it. So yeah, that's kind of um, it to blood magic. I just wanted to kind of say what it is and give some alternatives because like I had said, it's not beginner friendly whatsoever. Like I've been practicing for a long time and I've never even done it because I just, well, I'm also uh, scared of like, you know, hygiene and stuff like that. Um, but like, I've just never also felt the need to do it. So yeah. Um, if you want things that are going to add these same effects to blood magic, obviously it's not going to be to the dramatic extent of using blood. Here's other things that you can use. Um, a strand of your hair. Again, this is your DNA. It's going to be a little bit more binding. You don't need to cut it or anything like that. Just, you know, especially if you're like a girl with long hair, you just, you know, you can probably just rub your hair and a strand will come out and there you go. It's like you wouldn't have even noticed. Just using something like that. It's just, you know, one little strand and put it on whatever and there you go. And it's still kind of giving similar to the same effect. Again, just not as much, but it's also not going to be signing off. It's not as binding because you're not signing off your bloodline. So it's a little bit less invasive. Now, if you're like, okay, I don't want to use any of these things at all, uh, whatever, cool. Uh, you can use things like dragon's blood. Dragon's blood has been used to add potency to a lot of spells. Um, you can get it in an incense, just, you know, cleanse your jar with it, keep it burning as you are doing your spell. That's a good way to add potency and longevity to your spell. There's also certain spell uh, making techniques that you can do that are more long-term. So for instance, jar spells will be more long-term than candle spells. Even though candle spells um, call in everything a lot quicker, jar spells, it may come slower, but they're a lot more long-lasting. Now, if you are a beginner and you are for sure not ready to look into anything like that, you can also just use your spices. The thing about spices, and this is even coming from me where I hate things that are not flowers. I only work with flowers in my spells, which I know some people might disagree with, but hey, we're all people and we can have different opinions. That's the beautiful thing about being a human. Um, I personally think saffron is really good for adding speed and potency. Same thing with cinnamon, and I think cinnamon is also something that's good because it's uh, more cheap, where saffron it can be quite expensive. Cinnamon is more cheap and it adds potency like that. But um, yeah, just, you know, the spice rack in your house, especially if you don't really have a lot of things, the spice rack in your kitchen is going to be your best friend as a witch. So yeah, those are just a few alternatives now. So this is my little intro to blood magic and the things that I think people should know before doing it. Hopefully this was helpful, like I said, because I didn't go super in depth. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!